Lord of the Rings is usually recognized as the most accomplished piece of 20th century fiction. The underdog story with such a large scale of grandeur just blew my mind. It was Star Wars all over again, but for my generation. When Tolkien published The Hobbit in 1937 with Alan and Unwin, it was kind of surprisingly to everybody a huge success. So naturally they wanted a sequel, and they ended up spending 14 years and writing this thousand page thing, which was not exactly the sequel that anyone envisioned. The first time it was published, it did okay, but it wasn't, it wasn't the phenomenon. And then obviously the kids of the 60s, who I think were smoking a little pipe weed, got into it. And that created this real, you know, phenomenon to a certain extent. If The Lord of the Rings was never written, we certainly wouldn't have the fantasy genre as we have it now. People running across the street in Atlanta, Georgia at Dragon Con in their, in their costumes. <laughs> you definitely would not have had that if there wasn't The Lord of the Rings. D&D, a lot of things wouldn't exist. Uh, World of Warcraft wouldn't exist if it wasn't for Tolkien and Lord of the Rings. The fantasy stuff all comes from there. It's kind of the fantasy book. I think role-playing games would exist if it wasn't for Lord of the Rings, but I think they would be stupid, like Rapunzel the game or something like that. Someone, knowing that I was a huge fan of Tolkien, said to me, oh, did you know that there's like four Led Zeppelin songs where they mention the Lord of the Rings? And I was like, really? Wow, that's kind of cool. So that got me into Led Zeppelin. Obviously, when the movies came out, a whole new bunch of people started reading it, and it also crossed over into girls reading it a little bit more, because when the movies came out and they saw how beautiful Orlando Bloom is. <laughs> the audience was an amalgamation of, of every culture, every stereotype of, like, the, the jock liked it, the nerd liked it, the hot girl liked it. It's just this special place that Tolkien created that we all um, communed with for a certain period of time. After the movie, the books became bestsellers in India. And that's what I thought was fascinating, is that it was not just a ethnocentric view of the way the world was. It was, wow, look at all these different cultures coming together to take on one evil. We were traveling with Pete Jackson, and we got off a plane in Japan, actually and the airport was just insane, you know? And Pete said, this must be like what Beatlemania felt like. You can feel it everywhere. You can see it in a lot of different television shows. We did an entire episode. Wolowitz finds a ring, and then we mathematically calculate that that is the one ring, and it tears us apart. To dedicate an entire episode is, so you know we're huge fans. It's even got the Elvish engraving on it. <laughs> it's not Elvish. It's the language of Mordor written in Elvish script. <laughs> the video games are a really potent way for fans of the story or of the book to, to just live in it. War of the North comes from an actual uh, passage in Tolkien. Makes it, uh, you know, great for the nerd in me, because nerds like to get things right. It's not just made up and pulled out of thin air, it's drawn from the books, it's drawn from source material. Gandalf said that but for the actions of a few brave heroes in the north, all of Middle Earth could have fallen. We took that as the launching off point for our story. We're getting to that point now where you sort of have to start exploring new worlds. Yeah, I think it's really exciting. There are many things in the deep waters and seas and lands may change. The War of the Ring is this massive continent-spanning war, so in, in that way it is something like World War II or World War I which swept across all of Europe. What we thought we could do is go and explore another front of that war and see what was happening in another part of, of Middle Earth. There's a lot that was happening that was only alluded to in the books, and if this is my chance to, uh, you know, experience one of those tales, then I'm, I'm all about that. Quickly, tell me what has happened, but keep your voices low. There are unfriendly ears, even here in Bree. It gives fans the opportunity to kind of explore the fringes of the Tolkien world. And that is what it seems to me the developers of the game have done a really neat job of. When I was a kid, I couldn't have even imagined that one day, 30 years down the line, I would be able to actually run around in Middle Earth with the sort of graphics and the sort of level of fidelity and realization that we have today. So, you know, video games are really the, the fulfillment of the promise of these types of books and types of stories. You know, if Gandalf was any kind of real wizard, he would have taken care of the war in the North on his own, but he didn't, so now you have to have a video game.